I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and I'm thrilled today to be sitting down with the wonderful Judah Miller, who's the co-creator and showrunner of the show Bupkiss. And in in starting to talk about the the creation and development of the show, you know, obviously you're co-creating this alongside Pete Davidson, and it's very much centralized around him. And I was I was interested in a lot of the early conversations that you were all having in terms of writing and and figuring out what's the right arc because the show isn't just his present day world. It's really kind of like moving through different timelines, different spaces, different aspects, episode by episode. Mm -hmm. And so what was the initial kind of like foundational starting point of, well, if we start here, then we can really expand upon his world in lots of different ways. Yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, we created the show in the height of the pandemic and we wanted to do something that related to the ridiculous, absurd nature of Pete Davidson's life, which I think people are well aware of. And then that got us thinking about the disparity between Pete's public persona and then his personal self that his friends and family know him to be. So I think that that like thematically ended up being a big part of how we mapped out his arc in terms of like the frustration with the way that he's perceived sometimes in the media and like the acts that Pete is taking to try to transition to the next stage of his life towards adulthood to work through some of the obstacles that he's dealing with, whether it be mental health struggles or substance abuse or any sort of family dynamics that I think are insanely relatable to most people. And then take it through the lens of that things are heightened due to his high status, uh, you know, fame <laughs> and career. I mean, I think you bring up such a great point of, of the heightened aspect and then the really kind of more minute, smaller moments. And the show has a lot of those and really captures the internalized aspects of, you know, what does it look like if I'm just by myself kind of sleepily making my way through the airport? What is it like when the loneliness sets in when I'm shooting over Christmas and I'm in Canada and nobody's around me and how I'm feeling? And, and yeah. you know, like you said, mental health as well. And so how have you all approached kind of making sure that every episode really finds a lot of those really kind of small, quiet moments in between the larger moments? I mean, I think that a big uh, aspect of developing each episode was to key into a true, a truth within Pete's life. Each, like Even when we go heightened and absurdist at times, at the core of every episode is based on something that is factual from Pete's life. So I think that that kind of underlying emotional uh, content of each episode helps keep it very grounded and small, even when we go big and, uh, and silly at times. And, and it mixes those two spaces, even within singular moments and scenes as well. Like one of the really great scenes is the moment where Ray Romano kind of, he's watching Everybody Loves Raymond, Ray Romano present day comes out of the TV. But within that conversation and breaking the fourth wall, you have Pete Davidson talking to Ray Romano about, sometimes I think what would it be like if I wasn't here and how people around me would be better off. And that's yeah. an incredibly heartfelt moment in the show. Um, yeah. And so was it important as well as kind of exploring those two spaces is to really find those ways where we can play around with the narrative structure and we can explore it in this really interesting way all at the same time and being heightened and intimate and grounded all in one moment. I mean, that, that's really was our goal was to make a show that didn't have any rules and we wanted to have a sense of anarchy within the way that we make the show. So it's like, I think our willingness to take something that's very grounded and very you know carefully, thoughtfully crafted and then turn it on its side you know, because it's amusing or because it somehow goes even deeper sometimes when things go absurd, um, I think is what makes this show stand out uh, to the other programs like on TV. I think there's I think the biggest compliment I've received from anyone about this show is that some people have said that they haven't seen anything like this, which I think is amazing considering how many incredible shows we have on TV right now. And just to feel like we're doing something that feels new and different in a way is really exciting for us. I like what you were saying there about the anarchy of kind of like how we can do things however we want to and create our own structure. And yeah. I feel like that lends itself even into the use of celebrity and, and other performer cameos because there's moments like Keenan Thompson playing the referee of a women's basketball team that feels very much like the way that we know Keenan, but then we yeah. see Sebastian Stan furious that things have been purchased on his video on demand account. Um, yeah. You know, we see Ray Romano having that conversation that we were talking about. And so when you all looked at guest stars that could come in for these moments, how did you think about, well, what do 
we want to tell the audience about Pete and his relationship to the world, people around him, the industry he's working in. So it never feels like a gimmick and it feels like story development, character development. I mean, it really, like our guest, our list of guest stars is unbelievable. I'd say the show feels like a fever dream. And to us, the some of the people that we were able to get to be a part of Bupkis felt like a fever dream to us in a really good way. Um, I It really is like the collection of people that Pete loves the most. Like it was always when we were looking at who we wanted to bring in, playing themselves sometimes, sometimes like Keenan playing characters, it was always just what Pete was most interested in. And a lot of times people would tell us like, you can't get these people. You're not going to be able to get Joe Pesci. He's retired. And then people say, we're going to, we can do it. We can, and we can, we can believe in this and we can go after this and make it happen. And it felt like just time and time again, things that seemed impossible and felt impossible became possible because Pete you know, wanted it to happen and he's able to somehow make things happen. Um, but I think that uh, in terms of like the, the scale or the, the variety of guest stars that we have, we have people doing things in all different sorts of tones, which I think adds to the tone and variety of the show. And, and when you do break the fourth wall in the narrative structure, again, yeah. it always feels like there's a really specific reason for that. Yeah. You know, when we see Pete go to a bowling alley and get drugs and then he comes back to his trailer, but everybody's left and it's all of a sudden the light flashes on and there's music playing. We know that's music that he's hearing in his head that we also can hear as an audience. Yeah. And there's something really kind of poetic and lonely about that moment, even though there's upbeat music and lights on the screen. And so when you're finding those moments and being very judicious about if we're going to break the fourth wall in the narrative structure, yeah. what is the reason for it? Um, yeah. What do those creative decisions look like in conversations in terms of really finding the moments where it's going to elevate the story? I, I think it's just about finding the best way to articulate what it's like to be in the situation that Pete's in. I think a, a lot of what we did in terms of breaking structure or breaking reality was to dramatize what Pete feels like at a given moment. Like if we have Pete being chased by paparazzi, for example, we take it into an insane, absurd action sequence. But I think that there is a groundedness to that because it's Display, even though it's not really how that would have played out, it's touching upon how Pete feels being chased by paparazzi. Um, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, dancing and spotlights and things, I think that there is like a loneliness to traveling out of the country during the holidays to shoot a movie. It might seem like a glamorous uh, lifestyle, I think, when people read about this type of career and this success. But the reality of what it's like to actually do some of those things is very different. I think we tried to capture what it feels like to do some of these things that look very big and glossy from the exterior. And there's so much in the show in terms of his relationship with his mom, who's played wonderfully in the series by Edie Falco. And it's, it's interesting because it almost feels like they're each trying to find their way towards a central space between one another. You have yeah. Pete, who's experiencing all these really heightened moments, but he really, you know, is, is trying to like reconnect with himself, reconnect with his childhood, his home and to the more grounded spaces. And then his mom is there home in Staten Island and she's kind of like, what can I do to get out of myself and, and build my world and make my circle a little bit wider? Okay, I'm yeah. gonna go play basketball on this team. I'm yeah. gonna have fun hunting down an internet troll. Yeah. And so how do you look at those two characters in these two different spheres of their worlds, but the ways in which you really want them almost to be trying to like centrally meet in the middle of, with each other? Yeah, I mean, like, I think that all, all of these characters in the family is such a huge aspect of the show. And I think that uh, people are gonna be rooting for these characters to work through their issues and obstacles with each other. You know, all families have difficulty connecting. I think that the issues in Pete's family are specific to his family, but I think there's a lot of very relatable uh, family dysfunctions within there as well. And in some ways, their love for each other is preventing them from being able to connect at times. Uh, I think that sometimes when people are pushing too hard to connect, sometimes they push each other away from each other. Um, and in, in this show, I think audiences are gonna be rooting for Pete specifically and, and for Edie and Joe to find a way to, to connect because they, they are such a wonderful family. They do have such incredible chemistry 
But I think like all families, sometimes it's difficult to find that connection. And, and the show also isn't just taking place in in the current present. There's there's kind of jump backs, and even one of the episodes, which really specifically is is jumping back and forth to a, a wedding that he was at as a child. We see actual photos of him in the credit sequence from from that specific day. Yeah. Um, but what I love about the visual aesthetic is that within that, the the present day and the moments where we step backwards in time feel really connected. And mm -hmm. so as you were creating elements like the production design, like the color palette, the use of camera, how did you come up with a lot of the visual language with that idea in mind as well, that even if we step out of this specific time period, we still want it to feel like the same, even though aesthetically it's different. I mean, th that episode in particular is so based on actual events in Pete's life. And I think that we had a very clear focus in terms of every aspect of how we wanted that episode to look and feel authentic to this very specific time in St and this place in Staten Island. Um, and I think that, you know, we accomplished, I think, capturing a vibe of something that was very real. Um, we fortunately had like a lot of information to draw off of, like an interesting, you know, aspect of that show is our, you know, costume design was able to replicate the dress that Edie Falco wears is the dress that Pete's actual mom, Amy, wore to this wedding that really happened just a few weeks after 9-11. So it's like we were, you know, again, like the entire show does, we're exaggerating and changing things at times. But this one, more than any of our episodes, is based on a very specific actual memory of Pete's. So it's like, recreating the past. And lastly, I also wanted to ask you about the post-production on this show, because in terms of going back to what you were talking about at the beginning with finding that myriad of tones and even the drama interspersed with some of the comedy where there's a lot of moments where it's very much an undercurrent that just kind of quietly sits there. Yeah. There's such a specific nuance to finding that. Um, and so what was that like when you first went into post-production on the show in terms of really just finding the very specific pacing and rhythm that you needed in a it, lot of scenes? It, I mean, it actually started in the writing process. When we first started developing this show, we talked a lot about pace. And uh, we, you know, a lot of times when we described what we wanted the show to be, we would use terms like relentless because we wanted the, the tone of the show to have a relentless pace to it and where it continually builds and escalates. Uh, that's something that you see in the pilot, which I think works really well, where it starts, you know, with with a bang and somehow continues to build throughout the episode as you go. Um, I think it's part of what gives the show its like fever dream kind of quality. And I think that the the pacing was something that we really started discussing and, and mapping out in the writing process. In the editing, we we also, you know, wanted to have kind of a quick uh, and relentless pace to it. Even, even when we get into some areas that are, you know, somewhat cringe worthy at times, like, I think there is that like cringe comedy aspect of the show, which uh, I think will really take people by surprise. And hopefully our goal was to take something that was at sometimes cringe worthy, but also then flip it and make it heartwarming in a way that people thought maybe it might not be possible, but I feel like we might have achieved it. It was, that was definitely our goal with the pilot. I love that. I think it, it's so fascinating given all the intricacies and, and specificity that needs to go into creating a show like this. Um, so it's been really wonderful hearing all about this. Thank you so much. Thank you.